I feel like you have really good music. Oh, that's a good song. You do? I love it. Okay, well. You can go for it. Like this time. I love that song. You know Bob Dylan? You know Bob Dylan? Kids do. All right, guys. How we how do we feel about where we are right now? Y'all feel like you know how to use your calculator, able to do these problems? Did y'all anybody do the homework? You did not. I mean, I, ultimately, you're going to hand everything in on your test day. Um, so your test is Monday. So today is your review day to ask anything you want. If there's a definition you're misunderstanding, if you want to look through that review sheet. There is one thing on my key that's probably wrong, and that is how much money you're allowed to invest in a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA every year. And it's because it changes every year, and I really don't want to take the 10 minutes to change the key, upload the key, whatever. So in 2021, which would be the tax year we're currently in, and last year, you're allowed to invest 6000 per year in your IRA. So when you see that on the review, I think it's on the review. Yeah, in 2021, I think I made a note, but I don't know if it says that on yours. This answer may be different from the key, but on 2021, you're allowed to invest six, and when you turn 50, it increases to seven. So when you get older like me, it allows you to put more money away in there. And depending on which IRA, like you can avoid taxes. Like if I wanted to avoid little taxes, I could put it in my traditional. I don't have a traditional, but if I did, I could do that. If I wanted to put it in my Roth, I could put it in my Roth, um, which is great. It's helping the people who are 50, but since their window is shrinking of retire to retirement, it's probably not going to get the obviously the same kind of growth um, that a 40-year investment would get, but whatever. They do give you a little bit, they call it catch-up provision or something like that. But for your test, if I ask you that question, make sure you know it's 6000 a year for dudes like you, seven for people like me. All right. Does anybody have any question? I do want to do one more problem on this uh, classwork. And if you had any questions on the homework, I wanted to show you, remember the problem we did yesterday? Where I, sh I think I did, I changed it at the very end and I, I showed you how much you were actually paying towards a house when you really multiplied it out. And then we did, I'm pretty sure we did, I know we did it seventh, but didn't I show you hey, th what would happen if you changed it to a 15 year loan? Mm -hmm. And you saw that the price, the income and the, uh, the monthly payment went from like, what, a thousand to 1500 or something like that. It went up some, but not double. So you decrease the time you would have to pay it off in half, but you didn't double your mortgage. And, and I showed you over the whole time period, you saved about, what, $150,000 when you're paying off your house? Which if you start doing the math on that, if you can save $150,000 by paying a little bit extra every year, that's like saving $10,000 every year, but all you're really doing is investing an extra $500 a month, which is $6,000. So you're putting an extra six in there, but you're saving 10. Like it, it, mathematics holds up, but it's almost kind of bizarre. Like, really? I can pay an extra six to make an extra 10? But it's almost like you're treating it like an investment because you're paying it off more quickly. But I also wanted to show you, a lot of people don't like that. Like, I, I, honestly, I've always had a 30-year loan. But I've paid, I've paid, well, actually, one of them, I sold my house after 12, so I never got close to paying it off. But the second one, I've paid it off. Even though it was a 30 year loan, I was like, you know what? When I get extra money, I'm knocking this thing down. And just this past, I think it's been the past 12 months, we finally just said, you know what? We've got the money. Let's just pay cash, knock it out. Um, but the advantage of having a 30 year loan is you do have the freedom of paying that minimum payment every month and then paying more if you want to. And if you pay more, what that does, like if I were to send an extra chunk into my mortgage company and say, hey, credit this 10 grand towards my account. They just knock 10 off the account. Well, what that means is there's less money you owe them, so you're paying less interest. 
And every time you pay that extra payment, it's shortening the time you have to pay this loan. But at least it gives you the freedom of have, being in control. Like if you do have a bad month in sales or if one of your, like say you or your spouse gets laid off, then you have the freedom of going, oh, well, at least I don't have to make that full payment. I can pay that minimum payment. If you think about what we were doing yesterday, like I just had a friend who's been working for Intuitive Surgical for, I don't know, 15 years. He's was a salesman and he's represented the whole region. He's managed the whole region. He just got laid off, turned 50 yesterday, went to his birthday party. Like he's like, all right, I'm ready for, for chapter two in my life. But he has no idea what he's doing. Like he might, he's kind of a, you know, he's an older dude. People want young guys to come in there, young girls to come in there with energy and whatever and get out there and, and do the sales. People that they can just rag out, to be totally honest with you, that can work 80 hours a week. But he's he's an older dude. It's harder to go find a job. People don't want to hire him as a salesman because he's kind of statistics show young, has more energy, less kind of, I don't know. Just, it's just a better fit. So who knows what he will do? Um, but anyway, I did want to show you this. So this guy, uh, War Eagle, had a house payment of 120774 he purchased it for 191. He's currently holding a 30-year mortgage at six and a half percent. And again, interest rates are so much lower than that now. But and I made this key out, and again, it takes time to redo a key, scan it in, upload it, whatever. But I'm just going to keep using this information. But six and a half percent. What would happen if he increased his payments to 1,500 a month? How many years could he shave off his mortgage? So I just wanted to show you this. If you um. Like currently he has a 191 present value on his mortgage. So this is what he's owing. He's been paying 1207 on a 30 year mortgage monthly. It says compounded at six and a half percent monthly. Future value is going to zero. And right now he's been paying 1207.74. So this would be the mat, and he's paying it at the end, the, each payment at the end. So this would have been the math on this current situation. So like if you are calculating, hey, how long does it take to pay this off at 1207.74? It would have taken 30 years. So the question is, what happens when you change that to 1500? So you're going to pay an extra, what, 293. So you have the freedom of a 30-year loan paying that much. But, you know, maybe you got a little raise and you're like, you know what, I got a little raise. I got a $5,000 raise. I'm just going to pay an extra... 300 a month towards my mortgage, see how quickly I could pay it down. And $300 a month, again, to you guys, $300 a month is a sizable chunk of change, right? I mean, that would that would be kind of nice if your parents said, hey, here's your $300 monthly allowance. You'd be like, righteous. I mean, you'd be really excited about that. But when you get old like me, $300 in the whole scheme of things, I mean, it's just like if I was your age and I lost my wallet and I had $300 in it, I would be heartbroken. I'd be like, Gotta be kidding me. If I lose $300 now, I'm like, I might not even know I lost it. I mean, just the last few months, the market changed 5%. I mean, that's tens of thousands of dollars in, in a 50 something year old's retirement account. I don't even look at it anymore. It's like it's nauseating to look at it, but I don't even look at those fluctuations. So, my point is, if you are able to do it, which you probably will be, look at just $1,500. It's, it's not even a full $300. But look what that does to the years. Now, remember, if I'm calculating how many years, if you plug both of those in as a positive, I think this happened on number six. Did y'all get an error message? Anybody notice that? I think it was number six on this, where it asked you how many years? Yeah. How many years? If you just plug in 10625, it gave you an error message. Well, the reason why, and it just almost always happens, this is number six, I jumped back to. How many years? If you plug both of those in as positives, the math of what you're saying is my present value is I am borrowing 191, but if I make this positive, it sounds like they're paying me an extra 1500. So if I borrow 191 and they keep giving me $1,500 a month, at what point will I owe them nothing? Well, that doesn't even make sense. Remember, cash flow has to change directions. So if I borrow 191, I've got to pay back 1500 in order to get to zero. Does that make sense? So one of these has to be positive, one has to be negative, and it doesn't matter which one. You just have to make sure the calculator gets that the money is going in different directions. Then the end will make sense. So back to the problem we're doing, if you look at uh, this number, I got 
lost. So if you look at this number 12, Okay, if I want to know how many years, and I'll just, I can't, I'll show you the math. I'll show you what your calculator does if you haven't done this yet. So menu, eight, one. So I've got nothing there. I'm just going to tab down 6.5191000. If I do put in 1500, future value zero, present, payments per year 12, compounding 12. And, okay, so this is what happens to show you on the screen, if I forget to make one of these negative. So you go up here to N and you hit enter, <clears throat> negative 90, sometimes it gives you an error message, but negative 97 years, like that doesn't even make sense, right? So when you get an error message or a negative something that doesn't make sense, let that be a red flag for you. It almost always occurs when you're dealing with N and, and make that, Think about this change in cash flow. So make one of these negative. Doesn't matter which one. Negative fifteen hundred. Go back up to n, and now you're like, oh, two hundred and sixteen point six three. So back to sixteen point six three seven six six. Now I want you to think about this. What does that mean? Two sixteen. That's years times PY, right? This number is the years T times the PY 12. So if the question is, what is this going to do to the number of years, or how many years could you shave off, what would I do to solve for that T? Divide that by 12. So if I come in there and I take this and I divide it by 12, it doesn't let me do it anymore. Another weakness in this calculator. It made two changes in this, and both of them were bad. It used to be you could just go to like the very end and hit divided by 12, and it would do the math right there for you. It doesn't let you do it. At least I, I didn't see it allow me to do it. So if I divide that by 12, my number of years is 18.05. So this 30-year loan that I was paying 12.07 on, if I just paid an extra $300 a month, what did I do? I shaved almost 12 years off of it just by paying an extra 300. So I increased my payments from 1207 to 1500, which was less than 20%. And I shaved close to 40%. What's that? Well, well, maybe not 40, but I shaved a good chunk 12 years off of a 30 year loan, which is pretty great, you know, just by paying a little bit extra. And I gave myself the freedom of if I did get little tough times, I could keep that 300 bucks and just go ahead and pay the minimum of 1207. Now there is an advantage of a 15 year loan. I'll show you right now, check this out. Uh, home loans, home loan rates. And you'll probably see something spit out about uh, Usually it's a lot easier. Okay, look at this, this is 30 year fixed. This is the advantage, another advantage of going with a smaller window, like a 15 year window. Y'all see this? Now, I think this is a little dated because our rates are a little lower right now than this, but I just wanted you to see this. 30 year fixed rate, you're gonna lock that in. Um, three, the APR means there's all kinds of fees and junk associated with that. So the net result to you is gonna end up being 3.1. But look at the 15 year. 2.5. So you're getting a 6.6% drop just by getting a 15 year. So not only are you going to get a, you're going to pay this thing off in 15 years, the house is going to be yours. And then it's like you're living rent free. You're not going to double your payment. Your payment's going to go up maybe 30%. So your payment goes up just 30%, but you are able to knock it out and you get a lower interest rate, which is probably going to drop your payment even further. So it's kind of a win-win on, on many levels. I can tell you though, Human nature is not to, human nature is man, what kind of house I can get. Well, if, if you're going into it like, okay, I've got 2000 a month I can afford for rent. Well, obviously, if you stretch a loan out over 30 years, you can buy a nicer house, right? I mean, everybody wants a nicer house to live in. 
But if you look at it and you're like, you know what, there'll be a plenty of time in my life to live in a nicer house. Why don't I just get what I can afford, <clears throat> knock it out. I can get it done in 15 years. Thing is paid for. I'm, I'm rent free if I want. I can be saving money in other places or whatever. But um, there is an advantage to doing that. And if you can buy the house you want and get a 15 year, that's even better. But um, I, it's easier for me to say that again. I never did a 15 year, but I, I did pay extra whenever we could, or we paid extra whenever we could <clears throat> to not <clears throat> to knock that thing. <clears throat> Sorry. To knock that thing down whenever it's possible. And it is kind of nice when you <clears throat> don't have a house payment and then your freshman, your daughter jumps into college and you got two in college again for the next number of years. It's kind of nice to go, all right, I don't have a house payment. I got a kid's college payment. I can kind of shift that focus over in a different direction. Anyway, anybody else got any questions on any of this? Yeah. On number two on the homework, should we use 9% or 12%? Okay, so I want to have an income of 150000 a year. The figures you will have to have saved about this much. Again, you're going to need a lot more than that at this rate. And to be able to live off that. So basically, I'm treating that in today's value. Yeah, so I would want to use 9%. Because 9% will show me, it'll basically subtract out inflation. Are you with me? Like if I, inflation is normally around 3%. Now, that's going to be different this year because Corona and decisions our government, both last and this administration made about just printing money. And you're seeing, you know what inflation was this month? 0.8. This month. It's been point. Two, inflation's 0 0.8, it's four times. If that rate continues, which they're projecting it will be that rate or more for a year, you're talking a 9% inflation rate. That means the cost of good or more, the cost of goods is going up at a, yeah, 9.6, uh, is going up at a 9% inflation rate right now. Now it's been like two or three for over a decade. So it's been pretty small. 9%, we haven't seen that since the 70s and Jimmy Carter's terrible four-year administration. Where, now, it was great if you were a kid because your checking account or my savings account was making seven and a half percent, which is nuts. My saving account now is making 0.1, right? But 7% as a kid, you're like, man, I had $100 in bank and they gave me $7 this year just for leaving it there. And keep in mind, $7 was like a ton of money in the 70s. I mean, you could buy a brand new pair of, you know, the, you know, the Forrest Gump Nikes with the red swoosh? Those were 30 bucks. That was like the most expensive pair of shoes on the planet. $30, you know? So, I mean, $7 went a long way back then. But, um, but yeah, th what this is saying is I want to end up with that in today's value, okay? Today's value, 1.9 million. In the future, might be 6 million. But if I want today's value, I want to end up having a future value of 1.9. To do that, if I was making 12% compounded, I would have to put a nine in there to kind of subtract off that inflation. And I use that because it's been 3% for a long, long time. But when you just start printing extra money, it just, it waters everything down. <clears throat> and when you water stuff down, it just decreases its, its, uh, its, uh, its value. When you decrease in value, other money, your currency, then it costs more to buy stuff. And that's inflation. And sadly, you guys may be inheriting that. But you're the future, right? You can change these terrible policies. What's that word like stagflation, where like the value of money is like decreasing? But like, Coach Carlson was talking about it happened in the 70s. Oh, well, Jimmy Carter. I mean, it wasn't yeah. like really that small. <clears throat> we'll not get into that. Uh, um, but like, we're like, <laughs> the value of money was like decreasing, but Depends inflation you talk to. was but I would think most people would agree with me, but go ahead. <laughs> well, go ahead, go ahead. The, the problems with like the oil in, well, but like, 
forget I said anything. <laughs> Oh, I have a question about that. I don't know anything okay. about Skype. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Um, so what is like the test going to look like? Probably look a lot like your review. Like it Just does. questions like that with the definitions? No, no, no. You'll look, look at that review. It Really, you're going to have, you know, do you know your interest formulas? Yeah. Can you do use those interest formulas on a couple problems? Um, whether you're solving for T or whether you're solving for P or whether you're solving for A. And we can talk about that because we have not talked a ton about that, but that's that's just going back to our log and exponential problems where you were solving. And you will have a calculator, so you can just show your setup, show me your answer. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely, yeah. So this would be actually setting them up. And then even if you don't know how to set them up, I'm going to give you a few like this where you just have to solve. So I'm testing your ability to solve. Again, we haven't talked a lot about that, but this would be just me using random formulas. Here you're solving for R. Here you're solving for P. Here you're solving for T. Here you're solving for T. Make sure you can do that. You're going to need to use a log to solve for these. Um, right here to solve for R, you're going to have to do a 360th root to get rid of that power. Um, make sure you know how to do that on your calculator. Happy to show you in a second if you're struggling with that. And then you're going to have to be able to do problems like these um, that we've been doing using your calculator that way. Um, and, and then you're going to have to know definitions. So I'm not going to make you write the definition, but I'm going to make you have to fill in the blank on the definition. So. Um, like right here, an IRA where contributions are made with after-tax dollars. Which IRA is that? That's the Roth, right? You go ahead and you pay your taxes, and then you put your money in the Roth, and everything that grows from there on out is tax-free. Pre-tax dollars, you get a break. You don't have to pay taxes now, and it will grow, so you have the potential of having more in there because it, you know, you got to put it in the pre-tax, and it grows, but at the end when you take it out, then you have to pay taxes. And there's two different trains of thought, like, well, which one do I want to use? Am I do I anticipate retiring with a ton of cash, right? And I'm going to be spending money left and right, pulling stuff out. If I'm pulling it out, it's going to be in a higher tax bracket. If that's the case, well, maybe you want to go ahead and pay your taxes now. So that's kind of my plan and hope is that I will at least have a at least the same income, if not better. And if I'm pulling that stuff out and having to pay taxes on a high in a higher bracket, I'm going to go ahead and pay them now when I'm a school teacher in a fairly low bracket because I'm not like breaking the bank on stuff. Plus, you don't know what the future holds. I mean, you have no idea. They could they talk about raising taxes, raising taxes, raising taxes. If that really happens, then you very well may, everybody may be in a high tax bracket um, after a certain point, especially people like you that have really big brains and um, and have the ability to, to operate at higher functioning levels, having higher salaries, that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, just, just looking at random things right here. Um, like this is uh, stock right here. Um, but anyway, just going through there, the paid on borrowed assets interest. Um, but anyway, you can just look at those. But the definitions, I'm not going to like change them up and try to be tricky. I'm just trying to give you a general understanding. But if you know those definitions, um, like this, uh, savings plan available for public education employees and other, um, some nonprofit self-employed people, um, those are, that's a uh, 403B. And there's also a 401k, which is something probably most of you guys would have. It's an employer sponsored account plan. They seem very similar. So you got to focus in on like keywords like employer sponsored one as opposed to public education, things like that that will help you discern one from the other or differentiate one from the other. Um, mutual funding. You just got to have an idea about uh, these. But I, the key is up, so you can look at them and just study those. But, um, but yeah, the, I think we think your test looks a lot like that. But I do want you to know those terms just so you're not ignorant moving forward because um, it is. A lot of times it's not a matter of people make bad choices not because they're, they're not smart. It's because they're not educated or they're not competent on some. So I want you to know some of these names so, the, so you don't get in a meeting and somebody throws something like that and you're like, you know, or you have to actually raise your hand and ask a question or pull your phone out and Google something. I mean, just having a general knowledge about this is going to put you in a better spot. Because again, most people don't talk about it so to their kids. Do we have a calculator for the whole thing, like on the map and stuff? You will, yes. Okay. Um, and like I talked to my kids about it because I had them in this class. My youngest two kids, they were in my class, so they were in here for this conversation. But I still didn't tell them what I had. But but a lot of because of the fear of that, people don't get educated. My oldest daughter, 
doesn't know jack about stuff. Now, she has gotten a job and said, hey, what should I do? They asked me about so-and-so. And I was like, we need to have a conversation. Maybe she needs to watch these videos or something. But <laughs> but, um, but at, least, at the very minimum, she asked me, which you can always do. Go ask your parents or if your parents don't know anything about that or never did that. Ask somebody else. They probably know a friend who's a financial planner. Call them up. I mean, old people like me like helping young people like you. Um, they do, and most of the time they're willing. If they don't, they're jerks. They talk to somebody else. But they'll have a conversation with you and go, oh, yeah, this is what you need to do. Or in my experience, this is where I made mistakes. This is where you could really benefit. And I think you'll probably hear a lot of the same things you're hearing here. Um, but it's just a matter of asking questions. But, um, and not being afraid to look silly. Because you're going to look silly to somebody who has 30 years of wisdom of, of investing and doing stuff. You're going to feel that way, especially when you're as competent as you guys. Nobody likes to go, hey. But if you can just get past that and go, hey, what's a good thing? I don't know anything about investing. Throw it all out there. I know very little. And uh, tell me, what would you do? Or what are you putting your money in? Or what do you think's ideal? Or what do you think's ideal for somebody who's 22 for my next 10 years? Or the, whatever. Um, but those kind of things, those kind of discussions are really helpful if you want to have them. You asked about doing what? what slot, something like this? Well, like the, yeah. Okay, so on something like this, um, I will say this, guys. I'm going to want you to do this stuff algebraically. So algebraically means show me the algebra. But do you know that any equation you have, any equation, if you want to solve, all you have to do is move that over. Now, this you cannot do this on your test, although you can check it on your test. Right? If you move it over, Change the variable. I, I'm talking about if you only have one variable to solve for. So you could do this for this R, this P, that T, this T. Move it over. Change that R to an X. And then just graph this. Like pretend for a moment that that's a Y or F1 of X if you have it inspired. Graph that and find the zeros. We know how to find zeros, right? Zeros are where that value crosses. So what you'd be finding is where on the x-axis is y equal zero. Because originally well, that, that value you're putting in there, you're putting a y in there for the zero. So you're finding the zeros. You can solve any equation that way. You have to be able to do that on AP calculus. If you can't do that, you miss, you know, there's no way you get a five. Like that's one of the four things they need you to be able to do. And we don't do it enough in pre-cal. I accept responsibility for that. We just don't. We should do it more. Um, but solving with a calculator, any equation right here, I can subtract 1,000, change that T to an X, and then I can go Y equals that. And I can find out where on the X axis is Y zero. Find the zeros. And that X value represents your T value. Here, that X value represents your interest rate. So if you know that, you can solve any equation at any time by doing that. And if you get this down in your head for next year, dude, you'll be smooth sailing while everybody else is like, what are you doing? Okay, super easy. But algebraically, what do I got to do? I got to isolate the variable. Well, how do I get rid of everything that's with that R? What would you get rid of first? The P? All right, so you divide by 100, and now I'm to here. What would you get rid of second? That 360. Now, here's where people go wrong. They think, oh, to get rid of a 360, I have to log it. Well, when I log both sides, I'm trying to get rid of a base. Am I trying to get rid of that base? No. So you need to get rid of a power. Now, normally when you're getting rid of a power, it looks something like that and you get rid of the power by rooting it. Or maybe it looks something like this, and you cube root it. But you have it to the 360th power, so what are you gonna have to do? 360th root it, or raise it to the one over 360th power. Now you got a calculator, so the 360th root of that will cancel that out. But how do you do that on your calculator? Does everybody know? So if I want to do that, I'm going to go to um, 
You might have it on your book button. Yeah, you want to go to that little left part of your book button? There's your book button. Go to the left part. It has the absolute value sign on it. If you click that button, this comes up. And all you got to do is go over to that. But you can also, so that's one way. Also, I completely forgot. Right above the power right here, you see n through of x. That's a lot easier. Just control n through of x. And all you got to put is the 360 in there. Come down, type in the 87. It's going to be a really small decimal. Oh, sorry. Type in the 360 as the power right there. Three, just hit that uh, button, 360 root 87. And that key right there, again, is right over the little carrot key. So if you do that, boom, you get this very, very tiny decimal. All right? I guess it's not that tiny. 1.01248. Remember, this is a rounded value, so keep it exact. And then what would be the last two things you've done, you'd have to do? Subtract a 1, and then multiply by a 12. So when you do that, you... Multiply. So you end up with 0.149, so do you all get that? No, I, I compensated by multiplying by 12 back twice. That's good. But yeah, sure, right. I'm about Jimmy Carter, but I just missed it. And my parents voted for Jimmy Carter. So. I, he wasn't. He was a good man. He was a nice peanut farmer, <laughs> but things had been going on in the Middle East since 46 and 47 when the Israeli thing happened from the UN. I'll, give you, I'll give you this. It's never one person's fault. I'll give you that. Nice yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's true. It doesn't matter how good things are. It's never one person's fault. It's like what? Quarterback always gets way too much praise and way too much uh, criticism, you know? So, same with presence. So, I didn't actually say R was an interest rate. You were just solving for it. So, you really don't, if it says, like, if you look back at this problem, I mean, I'm not going to count off for this, but if you really look at it, I just said, hey, solve this equation. So, I, if I say solve for R, and that's R. If this was a real life problem, and I was saying, hey, how. What's your interest rate if you grew $100 to 8700 in 30 years compounded monthly? Then, yeah, you'd probably go, oh, yeah, 14.98%. But if you're just solving for R, that, that's your R, right? So you don't have to overthink if I just give you a math problem like that. Um, this, uh, just look at number eight. What would you do on number eight first if you were doing it? Divide by 50. So if I divide by 50, I get um, 20. And then what would you do? Remember, remember what you're doing. You're solving for T. So what do you need to get rid of? The base. How are you going to get rid of the base? Log what? So you could maybe go ahead and just do that. If you wanted to simplify that inside part, there's no variable with it. So 1 plus 0.12 divided by 4, you could use your calculator, but that's going to spit out 1.03. So if this was my problem, you said to log it. So I'm going to log both sides with what? A 1.03 log. You all remember this? Logging both sides gets rid of your base. And then the only thing you have to do now is just divide by 4. So whatever this decimal is, sorry. Whatever this log 1.0320 is, divided by 4, whatever that gives you. And everybody knows how to do a log like that? You know that in old textbooks, they didn't have logs. You couldn't do a log base 1.03 on your calculator. There was no ability to do that. You could do a base 10 log or a base E log. That's it. So in the olden days, they would do this. They would say, oh, just natural logging. It would go ln20 
In fact, a lot of textbooks still do that, and a lot of professors in college do it because they're old school. Now, if I log, does the LN cancel the 1.03? No. no, but what could you do? Couldn't you swing that to the front because it's a log? And then you could divide out the LN 1.03. So a lot of times on a textbook, and then when you're done with that, then you can divide the whole thing by four or multiply by four. But this is how we were taught back in the day because we didn't have a little base button that could be anything we wanted to. And sometimes you'll look at a textbook and a key a solution and they'll do that. I've seen that fairly recently, although our textbooks are, we're adopting new textbooks for next year. Um, so you'll probably have all the new math books. Um, we're trying to get a smaller one. But math, the calculus book we have is like, 10 pounds. We ordered this really nice compact one. Oh, you guys, I think, are getting a digital copy too. So, whoever's teaching calculus to you next year, um, you can, we, I know I don't, and I know he doesn't. Um, whoever's doing it um, doesn't use the book very much, like literally, maybe for homework a few times, but most of the time, not at all. So you can take that book and just leave it at home, most likely, and just have your little digital copy. Yeah. Um, on the crossword, on number 11, it asked about the um, compounding, and it said, Yes, whenever they don't give you compounding, and listen, very rarely in life would compounding and interest rates be on a different schedule, because it doesn't make any sense. If, if you are compounding quarterly, but making payments monthly, <clears throat> that's the same thing as going, hey, you're going to make me a payment, but I'm not going to subtract that payment from what you owe me. I'm going to keep charging you interest for the next two plus months. And then at the end of three months, then I'll give you credit for what you gave me and read you the interest rate. That's just a sloppy way to do things. The second you make a payment, it should be subtracted from your total and now you owe less, so you're paying less interest the following month. That's how it works. So I have not done that on a couple of problems to make sure you're reading and not just getting in the, in the thought process that it's always the same because it doesn't have to be. Um, and I can think of one situation in my life where my grandmother-in-law um, had some buildings in her little town that she used to rent off. I mean, it was like... New Brockton, Alabama. I doubt any of you have even heard of New Brockton. It's a suburb of Elba. If, I mean, a lot of you haven't even heard of Elba. Elba is a suburb of, where's the, uh, the Bull Weevil uh, city? Not Dothan, but Enterprise. And there are suburbs of Enterprise, like deep I mean, suburbs. That's the name of the anyway, bottom line. Um, she actually had a deal like that, but it was, again, it was a little old lady living in a podunk town who probably didn't know about the math enough. She would make them pay monthly payments, but then she would redo the interest every quarter, maybe because it just was so time consuming. But so it's possible on little personal transactions, but it doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't you just recalculate and then charge interest based on that new grade? But whatever. So yeah, if, it, if you're never shown the compounding, then just assume it matches the, the payment schedule. All right. All right. Good times.